You have no idea what you bring to the table. Hi, I'm Coach Maya, and I'm the creator of ThouShallGlow.com, a place where aspiring entrepreneurs come to get the gems to go get them in. Listen, I am about to run down to you the eight things that are secretly making you unhappy so that you can get clear on your bad habits and how to reverse them. I'm so excited to share with you these eight things that if left dormant can be detrimental to our personal growth and development and get you on the road to a growth mindset so that you can achieve wild success without mental limit if that sounds exciting to you let's jump right in number one your fear outweighs your passion fear is pulling the strings right now you want to try new and exciting things you even see others implementing their own versions of the same ideas you have some of them not even as well as you but fear has its foot on your neck you cannot move you're paralyzed number two you're somewhat comfortable right now growth and cataclysmic change doesn't come from comfort zones when I worked in the private sector, I had a nice cushy office job. I had friends in every department. The money reflected that they couldn't play too, too much now that I had a degree. So I was making more money than ever previously before. Until I accidentally hired a derivative of Lucifer who made my work life hell. That's a whole different story for a whole different day. The bottom line is, it took all of that for me to realize I was shrinking myself to fit into that tiny office. I am meant to do so much more you are meant to do so much more if I didn't almost pop that lady in the mouth that day I would have never left that position or created thou shall glow or even felt passionate enough to create thou shall glow I truly want for y'all what I want for myself I don't mean literally I just mean in terms of mindset and stability and a foundation to build a beautiful life upon things like financial freedom generational wealth Zero cap on your earning potential, true autonomy, and leadership under your own terms. More M's, more M's than a little bit. So my mission was first to learn the game. Right now, I'm applying the game, and pretty soon, Thou Shall Glow team will be teaching the game. Number three, you have no idea what you bring to the table. You find yourself saying things like, the market's too saturated, everybody's doing that, I can't hop on the bandwagon now. Your message literally could be exactly the same as 10,000 other people on the internet right now, but your delivery is specific to you. There's not another person walking this earth who has your delivery or who can affect the people that you can affect. There is a viewer or a reader or a listener, if you're dreaming of a podcast, who needs to hear your message the way that you deliver your message. This one stopped me from starting for a long time because when I thought of YouTube, I thought, hi guys. And immediately I felt fraud saying that. That's not authentically me. Hi guys. If I walk up to a group of people, I don't say, hi guys. I'd be like, yes sis, how are you? It wasn't me. The intro you heard at the beginning of this video, that's me. Prime example, Kelly Stamps literally my favorite youtuber right now because she is so true and authentic to self she came on the scene and from day one just did not care to be performative she performs sis perform but it's her own performance she will tap dance in her house or have a boa around her neck or a teacher outfit with glasses and a pointer stick. She performs, but she performs Kelly Stamps. Number four, you wear the victim a little too well. Story time again. I and my family are no strangers to tragedy. My oldest daughter was only nine years old when her father was murdered. That was only six and a half years ago. Fast forward to 2020. One week before our birthdays, this past September, our 16 year old cousin was murdered. Like, not even two months ago. But check this out. This ain't no sob story. Everybody experiences tragedy. What losing two of the most important people in my life taught me is how short life actually is. That pity party is taking too long, sis. It's time to step out of your victim mindset and into your excitement for life. There will literally always be something ready and waiting for the perfect moment to drop a piano from the roof on your head. And it's easy to blame outside forces for your lack of success. I know I've been in a victim mindset. No shame here. Your job and your life literally depends on it is to learn to build yourself up so that when things really terrible happen, you know to rest, not quit. 
you could literally die when terrible stuff happens to you or live like you still have time to create a beautiful future. Life hack, you have time. When my baby cousin died, I wept for three weeks. I could have wept longer. It's in me. I've been a victim before. I've carried a victim mindset with me before. I elected not to weep beyond three weeks. I would like to shout out my sister Kenya for that. I spoke with Kenya on my birthday morning because she called me to wish me a happy birthday. And I told her what happened. And her spirit is so pure and so energetic and so full of life. And I had been weeping that morning. I didn't want to enjoy my birthday. I didn't want to have fun on my birthday. I was dying inside on my birthday. I'm getting a little lump in my throat just thinking about it. Kenya told me that morning that it's okay to feel every feeling that you're feeling. Maya, you are entitled to be sad. You are entitled to grieve. You can't stay there though. You're allowed to sit there for a moment, take a couple days, take a couple weeks even, but you're not allowed to stay there forever. And that was really powerful for me because something inside of me clicked after that and it just was like, yeah, I'm not allowed to stay here. I have kids, they're depending on me. If I don't get the money, we don't eat. You're not allowed to stay there, Maya. I made a conscious decision to separate my baby's spirit from what happened to her. And only then could I understand she was a joyful soul. She was so silly. She was just like me and just like my daughter. Wallowing in my sadness does not honor her memory. Living my wildest dreams and doing everything that I set out to do, that honors her memory. Number five, you're waiting for the perfect time. Y'all know that IG me. Dear optimist, pessimist, and realist, while you three were arguing over the glass of water, I drank it. Sincerely the opportunist. Nobody, not the Gary V, Marie Forleo, Sunny Leonard Doozies, or the Maya Angelos started after they had it together. They got it together after they started. They hopped off the cliff and built the plane on the way down. Reed Hoffman. You have to first begin, then you practice, then you get good. That's literally how your favorite creators reached the level of success that got you to pay attention to them. Most people who started off doing what you want to be doing right now started off not amazing. They just kept it up. Now you respect them. Nipsey Hussle said, that's the only distinguishing characteristic between me and probably whoever else is going through this or went through this or is gonna go through this is that I ain't quit. Number six, you too easily accept failure as the truth. It's not the truth. This is an example of how detrimental a fixed mindset can be. A lot of times one failure and we're out the door. I'm not supposed to be doing that. I'm no good at that. That's not for me. That's not my lane. Something's wrong with me. Failure is actually a valuable tool for learning. When you were a child, you didn't know not to touch the stove. You had to touch the stove to know not to touch the stove. It teaches us through experience that something does not work. A failure is a teaching moment, not a life sentence. If you didn't die, you have the opportunity to try again tomorrow. Number seven, you are filling a void with endless consumption of digital content. Your creator did not create technology, man did. You were born with everything you need to make an impact. Everything is within you. You picked it up along the way to this moment. So aspiring entrepreneur, let's do an exercise together real quick. Go ahead and get your phone out. If you have a screen time capability, let's check out this screen time. Go into your screen time settings and check out your daily average for this week. I thought you used to be able to go backwards, but I'm not able to do that here. So for all intents and purposes, we'll just go with what we have for this week. So it says here that my daily average is four hours and 37 minutes. With Sunday, my screen time usage being as high as eight hours and on the lower end, looking like I'm somewhere around three hours a day for screen time. Right now, you're probably saying all type of mean things in your head, stop it. This is an exercise of reflection. And remember earlier in number two, we talked about growth coming from places of discomfort. This is not comfortable. This exercise is meant to make you uncomfortable. So what's your screen time average for the week? Go ahead and drop it in the comments. Do not be scared, be brave, I'll do it too. We spend countless hours scrolling and liking and double tapping gender reveals and fantasy dream homes and stuff our friends post. Taking mental note of what we like to manifest in our own lives but actively wasting the exact time that we need to perfect our craft. Life hack. 
It's time to wake up and start creating, not consuming. That's where happiness lives and not in the scroll. Tell me when you've ever reached the bottom. Exactly, it's designed like that. And whatever that screen time average is, start applying that amount of time to creating. Resources you should not so casually check out on this topic, Social Dilemma on Netflix, duh. And episode number 14 of the Living Experiment podcast. I will link both of those down below. So whatever interests you have, whether it be cooking or sewing or reading or tinkering with websites for friends or photography, this week, and if the week is almost over when you're watching this video, make a commitment to yourself and do it next week. But for next week or this coming week, dedicate that screen time average to your goals for the entire week, every single day. So if my screen time average is 4.92 hours, I owe myself five hours of creating time a day, even just research time. I think the research process is just as important as the creating process. And so actively research your topic. I personally probably spent two hours just scripting this video in order to film it. Otherwise, if I had to sit here and freestyle everything that I was gonna say, I wouldn't have filmed this video. Yeah, like start tomorrow. I'm bossy. It's because I myself have waited too long to start. I'm passionate about starting and I'm more passionate about influencing other people in a positive manner to actively take control of their lives, pursue their passions, and monetize their skills. We do not have to be wage slaves. We do not have to be work time exploited. Like we don't. I myself have sat on the sidelines for far too long and if you're catching this video close to its posting date then I'm just starting out and you can start out with me let's grow together I don't have it figured out in the least if I can inspire you to begin to that's amazing so again in the comments go ahead and put your screen time average down but also add three of your top goals for the coming month. So exciting! My top three goals for this week will be, number one, completing my loan signing refresher course so that I can actively jump in the loan signing game next week. Number two, manufacture and ship the orders from my launch last week. And number three, edit and schedule this video for upload. Last but not least, because I'm tired, y'all. Number eight, you are a stranger in your own body. You are not in vibrational alignment with your own energy. Because everything is so shareable and your peers are waking up to their passions and skill sets and putting in the work to manifest some pretty sizable income streams, we sometimes fall into, oh well, me too. I wanna sell lashes too. I wanna influence too. I wanna be the CEO too. Try instead, I wanna use my gifts and talents to serve too. I want to make an impact on the current vibration of humanity also. When you come from an authentic place of service, the money becomes magnetic. But it goes beyond that. Get to know yourself on a deeper level. What are your non-negotiables for relationships, for friendships, for your work relationship with your employer? What is too much? What crosses the boundary? What are you not able to accept? Your triggers, your trauma, the good, the bad, and the ugly. What makes you feel alive, empowered? Figure that out. What do you love to do? What can you get lost in for hours? What are you good at? So if these tips were helpful for you, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, click your notification bell so you can be notified of my next video. I have so much more planned for this channel. I'm sorry I left you guys hanging, but I'm back now. And I'll see you when my next genius idea strikes. Have a good one, you guys. Be back soon.